please turn to page 255 in your hymnals or open your bulletins for our prayer this morning. O oh God, you can make the form of blood in all nations, and by the star in the east, reveal to all peoples in him whose name is Emmanuel. It enables us to know your presence with us, so to proclaim his unsearchable riches, that all may come to his love, and bow before the brightness of his presence.
Jared and I would like to add. Please remember the J.J. Gabrus family in your prayers. Uh, J.J. passed away uh, unexpectedly this week. Uh, would there be any other uh, joys or concerns we'd like to share this morning or updates on ones who are on the prayer list? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Glad everything worked out for Rodney. Excellent. We'll continue to keep him in our prayers that things continue well and his healing goes great. Would there be any others this morning? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would ask for prayers for my son Daniel and his family. They are going to be coming to my house on Wednesday. And they're flying with the family of four now because they have a little baby, which should be the truth. And also, I would ask for
We ask that you will just allow their travels to go well. We also ask, Lord, that you will give Carol good weather for going and getting and bringing them home. We pray also, Lord, for Haley and her baby. We pray especially for them, Lord, and we place them in your hands. And we ask, Lord, that you will pour your comfort and your peace and your love out upon them. That you will touch her and her baby and that you will help her to know that she is in your love and that you are holding them. Touch your baby, Lord, and allow them to have their time together. Give them your peace, give them your presence, and help them, Lord, through these days. We pray also, Lord, for all these others who are on our prayer list. We ask, Lord, that you will be with them, that you will watch over them and care for them, that you will make their days good, that you will allow them to feel your presence, give you thanks and blessings for all the ways that you are with them and all the things that you carry them through. We also ask the same for us, Lord, that you will be with us, that you will pour your spirit out upon us each day, that we will be your children, and that we will share your love with your children around us. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to bless our community that you will keep your peace, your safety, and security upon it, and that you will continue to keep our neighborhoods good places for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. And that, Lord, you will go with them all the places that they go. Continue to keep them in your love. We also ask, Lord, that you will speak to our leaders, that you will help them to hear your voice, and that you will help them to do things that are good for all of us, that you will allow our lives to be to be a life to be lives filled with the blessings of, of this land. We pray also, Lord, for our church. We ask, Lord, that you will help us to be your hands and feet. That you will help us to be a place where others will find peace. That they will find rest. That they will find your love as they come to this place. Help us, Lord, to live in such a way that they will. We pray also, Lord, for your church as the United Methodist Church. We have a conference coming up this year. We ask, Lord, that you will move amongst the delegates, that you will help them to hear your voice, and that you will guide and direct them. We also ask, Lord, that you continue to just watch over those who protect us. Continue to keep the road workers safe. Continue to keep the ones who clear our streets continue to keep those ones who come and take care of us able to do so. Keep them safe in all the things that they do as they care for us and keep us safe. We thank you for them. We pray also, Lord, for those who are in the military. We ask, Lord, that you will surround them with your shield of strength and protection. And that, Lord, you will help them carry out the many difficult tasks that they are called to perform that you will bring them home safely to us. We pray also, Lord, for those who do not come home safely. To those who are injured, Lord, we ask that you will give your healing, both in body and in spirit, and that you will touch their lives in such a way that they will allow to re that they will be able to return to the lives that they had with those that they love. We pray also, Lord, for those who do not come home. We ask, Lord, that you will wrap their loved ones in your arms and pour your comfort, your grace, and your peace out upon them and help them to know that they and their loved ones are in your hands. Continue to watch over their families, Lord. We also pray, Lord, for those who are in the nursing homes. We ask, Lord, that you will watch over them and care for them and to continue to make their days good, that you will fill their hearts with your joy lips with your laughter. We also ask, Lord, that you will bless and watch over and take care of all those who take care of them and all those who visit them, that you will allow their hearts to be lined and filled with your joy also, so that the halls are places filled with your happiness and love. We thank you, Lord. We pray these things in your Son Jesus' holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, if you would, let us turn our blue folders to page number 27 for our next hymn this morning. Praise Him, praise Him. Testament reading is from Isaiah 
Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For beyond the darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear on, on, upon you. The nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be carried in the arms. Then you will see, then you will see and be radiant, and your heart will thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. A multitude of camels will cover you. The young camels of Midian and Epha, all those from Sheba will come. They will bring gold and frankincense, and the Lord will bear good news of the praises of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes to us from the letter to the Ephesians. It comes from the third chapter, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commissions of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the ministry was made known to me by revelation as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, the mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for the ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. And then our gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel of Matthew, from the second chapter, starting in the first one. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And then opening their treasure chests, 
They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Lord, bless these your holy words, and we who hear them. The wise men, the magi, some translations have them as astrologers, some have them as sorcerers. They were all that and more. When we think of wise people, what makes someone truly wise in our mind? What makes them truly wise? We don't see them doing too many stupid things, right? That's, that, that's the first thing, right? Yeah, okay, we don't see them do too many stupid things. But someone we think of as wise is a person who we tend to think of as a way of living down, and it works. It keeps them at peace. It keeps them able to look at a situation and get it figured out. It enables them to bring in new information, add it to what they already have, and be a little smarter at the end of each day. These guys, wise guys, not mafia men, but wise people, people who paid attention to what was going on around them. Sometimes we don't do that in life, do we? We get so busy doing what we have to do. And I know it gets crazy sometimes, doesn't it? You know, it's like Sharon right now. Keep her in your prayers. Please. She's trying to go between Napoleon and Bowling Green and care for herself. And help care for us. All of us have that here today, don't we? It's been a hard winter already, hasn't it? We're already feeling a little beat down, Mike. We're already feeling that, will this ever end? So let's face it, winter is the dark days, isn't it? It's the time that, what, 5 o'clock in the evening, when we really wish we had some light still streaming in the windows, the only light that's coming in is either the porch light or the street light. The wise men. They weren't just somebody who was looking for a star. They read everything. They read the library that's in Alexandria. They read the library that was in Sumatra. They read the library that was in Babylon. They read from every library that was available to them. They read from the library of Jerusalem. Because that came to Babylon in the captivity. And Judaism spread out throughout the world. And it was written down in Greek. And they've learned, and they've grown, and they know that something was said by a man named Daniel. Belteshazzar was Daniel. Because that was the Babylonian name. That was the name that was given to him by Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar, the greatest of the Babylonian kings. Daniel was his greatest advisor. His greatest ruler, a truly wise man. That no matter what came his way, no matter what trap was set before him, he prayed. And he prayed, and then he let God direct him. He lived his life looking for God moments. We do too, don't we? We live our lives for God moments too. When God breaks through and takes away that burden. When God comes in and gives us that warm tang leaves that bounce between our toes and the top of our heads, letting us know that he is truly with us and that he loves us and that he has the things in control. What's the biggest cause for God moments? Prayer. Because without prayer, we can't be connected to God, can we? 
And without being connected to God, we can't see and have God moments. The wise men sat down on the trip to have a God moment. Not sure it's the moment they expect. <clears throat> they leave Babylon. They've got a trip of about, oh, it's not that far. It's like us trying to get to Lexington, okay? It's not really that far in today's day and age. But us trying to get to Lexington in the days of Jesus would take a little longer. So they had to pack well, because let's face it, when you're traveling through wilderness, when you're traveling through deserts, when you're traveling through wastelands, you need a lot of water, don't you? You need a fair bit of provisions. You need a fair bit of protection. A real wise person wouldn't have just stuck a flask of wine on their back, hopped on their camel and taken off, right? They planned, they prepared. Now they knew the time had come because everything else that Daniel had written had come to pass except what he had said about the Messiah. Everything else has come to pass. They watched this timeline and they watched Persia come in and take down Babylon. And the new Persian king, just as Daniel had said, they went back to Israel, just as Daniel had said. So they were taking a trip to Jerusalem. They were on the way to Israel because they saw the star and they knew the prophecy because of everything that they had learned. <coughs> everything that they had prayed for. Now that's the amazing thing about the Babylonian captivity. The Jewish people saw it as a tragedy. It, the, the, the temple getting destroyed was a tragedy. The Jewish people, after being so rebellious to God that the kingdom would be ended, it's a horrible thing. But it was a part of God's plan to get his Messiah born in that stable and placed in that manger in Bethlehem. It was all a part of that. Now they come to Jerusalem and that is the right place to go because that's where a king should be born. When they get to Jerusalem and they get into Herod's court, they get a visit with the king in his presence and they say something like, Oh, King of Israel, congratulations on your newborn son, the King of the Jews. There was no God moment there. There is not one single God moment for a person in Jerusalem at that point in time. Herod's a bad man. He's killed wives, he's killed sons. He's killed son-in-laws. Herod the Great was the great builder. He remodeled all of Jerusalem because he wanted to be Rome. He remodeled it all, and that's where Herod got his greatness. Herod the Great Builder. If Herod had been a wise man, he would have known, wouldn't he? If he had truly been the king of the Jews that the people were looking for, that the people even needed, he would have known that he was in Bethlehem. He wouldn't have had to call anyone. Hey, um, is there some obscure prophecy saying the Messiah is going to be born somewhere? You say, well, it's not obscure. <laughs> We've all been talking about it for a while now. Daniel said it's about that time. Bethlehem, of course. So Herod lets them go after telling them Bethlehem. And on their way, the star is in its position again. And the star 
body is moving. They've been told, Bethlehem, should just take you a few hours to get there. It's really close. It's about 20 miles. Should be able to get there pretty easily, pretty quickly. And the amazing God moment that happens. It's not when they knock on the door of the house. It's not when they see the baby in Jesus. It's not any of those things. It's whenever they're traveling. And they're going there, and they're in the middle of life, in the middle of confusion, in the middle of not really sure what to expect here because they went to the palace and there was no king's son there. It's when that star stops and rests over the house. They know where their destination is. And it's in this moment that they have their God moment. That that feeling just sweeps over them. That God has been with them through their whole journey. And has carried them to the place where his very son has been born. And the prophecy has been fulfilled. There's nothing said. They come in and see the child and they pay him homage. Because of the God moments that they've had along the way and getting to the place where they were supposed to be. How many of us like camping? Being out in the middle of nowhere, enjoying all that quiet and solitude and having all that time for just contemplation and thought and prayer. That's what they've been doing for a couple months. Every night at the end of their journey, They've been praying, Lord, make our journey fruitful. Make what we're doing the right thing to be. Make this journey that we're going on go well and allow us the glory of seeing you at the end of it. Every night, every morning when they started off, Lord, carry us closer to our goal. And that's where they were. That's where they lived. That's truly what made them wise, was their relationship with God. And that's the same thing that makes us wise. If you remember, wisdom starts with the knowledge of God. That's what the Psalms tell us. Wisdom starts with the knowledge of God. That's where they started their journey from. Just faith. Just knowledge that God said he would do. And well, everything he said he's going to do, he's done. Let's go check this out. It's kind of like the shepherds. You would think their God moment was when the angels were before them. That just freaked them out. Their God moment truly was seeing that it was as it was told to them. And that's why it's worded that way, because that's where their God moment was. It wasn't when the angels burst through and scared them out of that slumber, scared them out of that praying at night. It was whenever they got there and they saw that the word of God was true. Because sometimes we are much more like the shepherds than we are the wise men. We want it to be true. We so want it to be true. We just can't always take that extra step. The shepherds wanted it to be true. They wanted that hope. They wanted that promise. Yet they're just lowly shepherds. The lowest of the low. The only ones worse are the slaves that empty bed pain. Hoped it was true. And when they found that it was as God had said. How many times in our lives have we found that it truly is as God has said? Have we? I hope we all have. That it truly is as God has said, and that He will be with us through anything that life can throw at us. That nothing in life or death can separate us from Him or His love. 
that's all from prayer. Breakthrough prayer initiative um, that my cluster group and I have been praying through and working on and that we're bringing to our churches. We truly have come to believe, and I have truly come to believe, that the only way things get done is because of the Spirit's movement. And the only ways that the Spirit moves is when we avail ourselves to Him and we ask Him to move amongst us. It's prayer. It's all prayer. Everything ties together through it. Every time you read your Bible, you probably, if you're like me, you probably find something that you need to pray about, right? Something that you need to work on. And so we start to build ourselves down, actually, instead of building ourselves up. We put more burdens on top of us and on top of us and on top of us. And Jesus said, if you remember, I've come to make your burden light. He wants to help us carry it. How do we give it to him? In prayer. Through prayer. And the more we give to him in prayer, the more we grow in his likeness through prayer, the wiser we become, the more trusting we are in God because he's carried us through so many more situations than we ever could have believed that we would have made it through. Because we all know life will give us more than we can handle, right? We all know that, right? There's all times we've all broken down. There's all times that our heart has broken. There are all times that we have felt completely crushed. And what rebuilds us? God rebuilds. Where His Spirit lifts us up and carries us to a place that we couldn't be. Or sometimes just our ideals and ideas have been challenged. Or sometimes our very nature has been touched and we just don't know what to do about it. That would be one of those times I would suggest that you would in, involve some of Daniel's practices. Daniel spent so much time each day in prayer that it actually got him thrown into the lion's den, if you'll remember. If Daniel hadn't spent all that time in prayer, he wouldn't have been ready for the lion's den. Because if you remember, they passed a law that said you had to say something good about Nebuchadnezzar first before you prayed to any God. And well, Daniel was a wise man, and he didn't do it. Because he was wise enough to know that God was going to carry him through everything because God had said he would. The same is true for each and every one of us. God has promised to give us, to go with us through everything. And believe it or not, you're better equipped than the wise men were. You are better equipped than Daniel was. You are even better equipped than Isaiah was who made the prophecy. Because as Gentiles and believers in Jesus Christ, the Spirit actually rests upon us and dwells in us. In those days, it did. In those days, the Spirit would go where the Spirit would will. But on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came for all, for all to be able to hear the good news. And that's the even greatest thing about the magi and the wise men that they were Gentiles. They weren't Jewish believers. They weren't even proselytes. Those who had converted to the Jewish faith. They were just people who were wandering around looking for God moments that they could celebrate. Let's pray. Dearest Heavenly Father, help us to see your movements. Help us, Lord, to be able to trust you and put our trust in you in such a way that we actually see your movements around us, that you help us to feel you in us. Help us, Lord, to each day take some time to spend with you. 
not as secondary, but as primary. Help us, Lord, to start each day of each day's journey, say, carry me through the day you have, Lord. Help me to love. And in each night when we're done, help us, Lord, to look back on the day and know that you loved your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, would you join me on page 7 of our hymnal for our communion liturgy this morning? Christ our Lord invites to his...